Greetings, black kings and black queens. Mm -mm. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Hi, greetings black kings and black queens I hope everybody is enjoying their summer I hope everybody is enjoying their weekend um, it's a beautiful day today and let's just jump right in so oh first let me talk about two things first I just want to say rest in peace um, we lost a huge historical figure um, this past week um, civil rights activist um, our guy who coined the phrase good trouble I will be remiss if I did not just at least acknowledge um, John Lewis. You know, um, he, he was a civil rights leader. Um, he marched for the equality, equal rights of African Americans. Um, just a lot of social justice issues and trying to, um, you know, work um, for the betterment of our people. With that being said, I just wanted to shout him out. Secondly, I wanted to show off a little something. Uh, Y'all, look at these. these. These are forever stamps. Uh, my man Marvin Gaye. First of all, music is life. Music is everything. And Marvin Gaye, a native of Washington, D.C. Um, so I just wanted to show this off or whatever. I love, you know, making certain purchases. And this is definitely one of those purchases that I'm so proud of. I'm going to start um, writing letters to my niece. Um, because... She's a young teen, a rising sophomore, and um, I'm excited about that. So I want her to have, you know, either I'm going to put these, yeah, I'll probably put these on the cards um, that I sent to her, the letters, and then I'll also get her some stamps so that she can write me back. But, um, so anyway, so that's that. So let's get into today's video. Um, today's video, um, I'm going to talk about a conversation that I had with a brother the um, other day. Um, very interesting conversation. He's a father of a six-year-old boy. Um, so, you know, either, you know, I would just say, let's say first grade. Um, he said, what if a kid comes to your class and says Black Lives Matter? Um, and then he said a, a little, another little girl responds and says, no, black, it's not Black Lives Matter. My mom told me it's all lives matter. You know, how would I address that? <laughs> if you know me... <laughs> Then obviously I'm going to address the situation. I'm an educator. <laughs> um, and I just think it's, it's important to teach the truth, not just, you know, skate over things or anything like that. So first off, it's definitely an opportunity right here for a history lesson. Um, while we're going to talk about Black Lives Matter. If you just check out these images that I'm about to show, then I'll go ahead and explain how I would address that situation. Okay, so in that lesson, obviously I would just say, talk about African American history in this great country of America. And, um, you know, let our kids know that, in fact, African American history did not start in 1607, um, when Africans were brought over here to America to be enslaved and to be considered as property, right? Um, so that's something very important that I would already share. I would say, look at these images. I would tell them about Jim Crow laws. I would tell them about uh, segregated schools, segregated movie theaters, segregated water fountains, segregated restaurants. Um, it just teach them that, you know, while we are all part of the human race, African Americans, black lives have, you know, a different plight than um, their white counterparts, right? So um, definitely an opportunity there. So he was like, mm, well, that sounds kind of pro-black. 
I'm black. <laughs> um, but what I will say is I said, okay, fine. You know, I teach big babies. I don't teach little kids. So I said, well, maybe let's put it like this. Maybe I would give them the analogy that there are 10 puppies, right? Everybody loves puppies. 10 little puppies, <laughs> all on white. And there's this one little black puppy and he's injured. He's bleeding. He's hurt. He got a little broken leg. Okay. And then I said, so now you have your 10 puppies. So now what do you do? I said, do you give your immediate uh, attention and give um, a little bit of extra TLC, extra loving care to this puppy who was injured and bleeding and hurt? Um, or do you just, you know, don't even mind him and just keep on um, focusing on everybody else? And the likely answer is that all the kids are going to say, oh, no, he's hurt. He's bleeding. We want to give our attention to this injured puppy. So that's probably the analogy that I would give to young people. But let me say this. I think it's horrible <laughs> that we as African Americans feel like, or for him certainly, to say, oh, that's pro-black, <laughs> you know, or to think like it's a problem to educate our young people about our history. Um, I'm going to tell you why. We have to understand, um, if it comes to uh, white people in southern states, um, we have to know that they're teaching their kids about their Confederate flag, right? Um, pride in the Confederacy, pride in wanting to... Um, continue slavery pride and wanting to keep black people um, in a state of submission in a state of inferiority um, you know just at the bottom of the barrel right just continue to consider people and consider and treat black people um, as if they are less than human okay so if you understand that that is one narrative that's being taught and certainly at an early age every year these fourth of july cookouts and parades and everything that they have um and different celebrations you know different opportunities where they have to talk about history certainly in the school systems in the south um why wouldn't you want to counter that narrative by teaching your young your, your young people and your babies about jim crow laws why wouldn't you want to teach teach them about you know harriet tubman and people like nat turner um, people like um, Toussaint Louverture, which I probably butchered his name, I'm not French, <laughs> um, but just great African Americans who, you know, took a stand to say like, this is not for me, you know, this is not what I was meant to be, this is not right for my people, and so they took a stand. It's very important, you know what I mean? Like, we have to counter those narratives because that is the problem. When we don't educate our kids and we let uh, a system educate our kids or we let, you know, certain biased uh, entities teach our kids then our kids think like oh my only option is to be a drug dealer I'm gonna go to jail or be dead I'm gonna be a rapper or an athlete that is what the system would like our kids to think and if, and if they learn that oh you came over here as property you came over here as slaves and that's really you know what you are gonna amount to then certainly that is a problem and so it takes you the parent at home to educate your kids and say guess what uh, we're from the motherland you know our ancestors were, were taken from their home but guess what we are from kings we are from kings we are from a continent that has the richest culture um the richest traditions um they are rich with wealth of uh, diamonds gold etc they are rich with languages they are rich with uh religious spiritual practices and things of that nature so if our kids are taught and they learn from a young age that we are from kings and queens and that we are from a rich culture, no matter if it was stripped from us or taken away from us or we don't fully know a lot of our background uh, due to slavery, you know, I think that would change the narrative. So I love that I was able to have that conversation with that brother. Um, I just think it's so important. <laughs>